Yeah. Uh, you, know, okay. you know, we are talking about some regular stuff. You would as well hear from you. Oh, this is such a First of all, I'm so full. If I get too honest, I'll be weeping. One. I'll get emotional. Yeah, I'll, I'll get emotional. One. So if I get emotional, forgive me. It's it's genuine. Right, Karni. And when I saw Mahaswami spoke, I was overcome because I had a starship at Little Kanchi in 1977. He spoke to me. Yes. The, the Periyava that's there now was in Salem. In the fall, in the autumn of 77, but Mahaswami was in close retreat in Little Kanchi. I had just returned from Ramana's ashram and I had never seen such purity on this earth. And uh, there was a young sannyasi with him. It was early morning. No queue had formed. We didn't think that we could see him. Very difficult. I was living in number two Mari Chetty Street in Mylapur with Raji and Gopal Ayer, right across from the Udipi Hotel and the Banaika Temple and the post office, right at the corner. And it was a short walk to, uh, you know the area, it was a short walk to the temple when I went every day for the earliest puja, every day. And went to the Ramakrishna Mat there and bought books and all of that. I was a 30 year old young man. I'm now 69 years old, a few years older. So, uh, I knew some plot of the Periyapa. I knew the lineage. But coming from Oklahoma, you know, it's not, not so easy. It takes a few years to understand a little more. And when I saw him, a young sannyasi was with him. There were two big doors that opened. It was like a concrete platform with posts and a thatched roof. Very simple, some bullocks and carts and those little bitty, uh, little bitty thatched roof, tiny houses were there. Very intimate and early morning, that beautiful air, you know. And he uh, suddenly uh, could hear the Rikrakshas around his neck. And there were some bars on, no fly wire, but the shutters were open. And suddenly the two doors slowly opened. And Mahaswami stepped right into the middle. And a young sannyasi was with him. He said he wanted to know why I had come to India. I said two words, Ramana Maharshi, and I burst into tears uncontrolled. Because I felt like a glass house. I, it, wasn't, it wasn't a vision, and I wasn't guessing. He could see everything about me in one glance. He had it all. Not just this gentleman. He had it all. And I, there was nowhere to hide. And I was overwhelmed. Absolutely. Blasted. I've never had such an experience in my life. And I knew that he had sent Paul Brunton to Ramana when he was a young man of 35. I knew about his walking off from India, north, south, east, west. I knew some of the history, but to, to be in his presence was, you could never express it to a person that hadn't experienced it. Words won't do. This whole thing started, uh, I, I'm a little embarrassed because I don't want to take too much of your time. No, no, no you're not. Go ahead. I first saw Ramana's picture in Autobiography of a Yogi, Southern California, when I was 21. That picture is subsequently removed from that book. And I wasn't attracted to him at all. I had these uh, images of long-haired yogis, and I was 21. And this uh, a little portly old man and short white beard sitting in a chair. I was more attracted to the Paramahamsa Yogananda. But I remembered that face. 
And then I found a little booklet in the bookstore two years later that said the heart of the Ribu Gita. I didn't know what the word Gita meant, much less Ribu. But that was Ramana's picture on the front. I said, isn't that the same man? So I looked at it, and yeah, it was. So it proceeded like that. And then when I was 28 years old, after a very 10-week painful bout of shingles, I had a Guru Kataksha dream of Ramana Maharshi. I didn't know what Guru Kataksha meant. Other people told me later what had happened. So I was taken to the temple in the dream. I had darshan of the, of the gar, in the garba. And I came out and everyone was laughing and weeping with joy because they had also been like me at one time and had come home. So we went on the Pradakshina road, the old Pradakshina road, around to the ashram, past Shishadri Swami's ashram on the way. I took a bath, changed my western clothes, put on a veshi, and without any words ever spoken, I knew that Ravana was waiting for me inside this room. No words were ever spoken in the dream by anyone. So I walked into the room, and of course I saw his face because of those photos that were so popular I had seen of about my age now, maybe of two or three years younger with the, you know, I also shave every Purnima. He's done so many strange things to me. <laughs> and he had that short white beard and hair. Never said a word, he just looked in my eyes. And I felt like I was dying and going mad at the same time. And going insane. The terror was unspeakable. I knew it was coming from him, but it wasn't male malevolent. I don't know how I knew that, but I did. And instead of asking it to stop, which I knew it would, without words, I just collapsed, you might say, into his arms like a nursing baby on its mother's breast. And as soon as that happened, and without any embarrassment from what Ramana has said in the Guru Vachaka Kovai of Murugunar, one of his greatest, a tall giant in literature, who gave everything he and his wife to Ramana and probably became a Jivan Mukta himself when you study the Guru Vachaka Kovai, which I do every day. There was no Ramana, no me, and no world. It didn't become one. It had always been one. I just didn't know it. And there was no there was no Joseph there, but there was I don't know how to talk about it. It, it was I've only experienced that once in my life in that dream. I've never experienced it in the waking state or any other dream. Ever. But my vasanas didn't allow me to remain there. So the panchakoshas, which I knew nothing about, that I recite two times in the three volleys of the Taitri Upanishad, which I chant in Sanskrit every night in full, seven days a week. You'll have to forgive my shiksham. It's as good as Radhakrishna Shastragal has been my teacher on the tape. Yeah, who, uh, God rest his soul, who has, of course, passed away quite a few years ago. But it's as good as I can get it. So I have had to rewrite the entire Veda Gosham because I knew nothing about combination. You know, I'm innocent, so it's not my culture. So uh, that all this is talked about there. And my favorite part is that uh, in the Brigu Bali, uh, Buha, Buha, Ve, Ahamanama, and it's talked about in the Ashtabhakra Gita as well. Oh, marvelous. You know, the, you know those verses. So this is, uh, it's proceeded like that. Then I went back to India in 91. I met the Ganapati Shastrigal at the Maleshwam Ganapati Temple in Bangalore. I went every day. Every day, multiple times. He was a, he, some of you know him and his family. A large man, jovial, big smile that would warm your heart. 
I never spoke a word to him because I didn't know the language and if what he knew English or not, I don't know. But he would just, his eyes would just welcome me when I came to the temple. So I was traveling with a, one of the Shankaracharyas of Bhattarik Ashram. His name was Vidya Narayana Tirtha Swaminaha. And he lived in Bangalore. He took me to a huge Shivalingam out in the country about five hours by car. We went north, I think, near Chitradurga. And they did a huge Abhishekam of that lingam. It was oh, two thirds the tall of this of this room, out in just a little hut. So I got the privilege of manning this giant, very difficult pump to do all the water for the, the huge uh, thing they would swing over, you know, to do the Abhishekam. Then we went near a village near Chitradurga for a huge home. Uh, a well-to-do Brahmin extended family was there, Ayer family, or maybe not Ayer, that we were in, uh, we were in the Mangalore area. And uh, five gentlemen got out of an ambassador car, and it was Ganapati Shastrika, and four other Shastrikas to do the home. So it was in a big room like this, with bars around the ceiling, where the smoke could come out, a permanent. And I was standing way in the back, huge room, four, I mean, three or four times the size, to just watch, you know, from the back and not be a nuisance and just so privileged to even be allowed to see such a thing. And Swami, uh, uh, Ganapati Shastragal was sitting straight across by the fire pit. He saw me. He stood up, he came, took me by the hand, which I had never had happen before, set me right down on the edge of the hallan, across from him, for over four hours. I couldn't move, I was 30 and in good shape, but everything from my waist down went to sleep. I didn't move a hair one time, because I, I was very conscious. <laughs> And it was such a sacred moment. And they allowed me to help pick the sticks that are used, you know, that we, we chant in the uh, in the chamakam and we ask for all of those things. Of the, so I was allowed to do that. And then after it was over, he threaded me. Yanapati Shastriga, I still wear today. Oh yeah. Dot it into the Kaundinya Gothram. Give it. Kaundinya. Abhivadiye. Ah. Oh. And so was Kavikanta Ganapati Muni. He was Kaundinya Gothram. A chapter of 80 by the time he was 19. Sent a Navad beat from Kashi and he won the top prize at the age of 22. Who can, um, you know, it's impossible. God's grace. So uh, he, uh, start, I started learning the Sanya Vandana. I still do the morning one, but I gave up all the cut water and everything. I do all of the all of the uh, words, you know, everything. And um, then I do the uh, Tai Chi Upanishad in the evening, and I do the Vedic Ocean in the morning with that part from the Mahanyasa Rudram because it's so difficult. I know very talented people that are very fluent in Sanskrit will never tackle it. So I certainly will never try. But I do this, but Radha Krishna Shastragal, I listen to the whole Mahanyasa Rudram of his every day. It takes about two hours. So that's a lot of my day. And what a, what a man, you know. So, but I do the center portion every morning. Says, uh, where it starts at like, Om Buru Bhuva Subaha, pardon my stiction. Please, I'm embarrassed. Om Am Namasham Bhave Dhamma Yo Bhave Dhamma Shankaraya Dhamma Yaskaraya Dhamma Shivaya Dhamma Shivataraya Dhamma Om Am Vibhurasi Pravaha Morab Renani Kena Pahima Akne Vibhima Mama Mahigam Sihi Am Bhubhu Vasivarum Om Hrim Dhamma Shivaya Shikashtame Vibhra Down to the feet Vagastikate Sarvapape Prom Because I'm this way all the time. 
My wife should get tremendous credit. She's a Lutheran, and there's no issue. Really? No, there can't be in this path. It has no issue with Mauna, right? This the basis. I don't know about Mauna. Ramana does. There's no, no problem with any other faith at all. So she's, we've been married 36 and a half years. That's one thing. So. I'm sorry? Advaita Lutheran. Advaita Lutheran. Advaita Lutheran. Advaita Lutheran. Your wife is a Lutheran, right? Yeah. But, yeah. Amazing. A real, how can Advaita have any issue with any other religion? <laughs> it's usually the other way around. <laughs> yeah. Usually they Sure. But even then, Ramana said, what words? We are duty bound to adjust. Not the other person, ourselves. Then there's no problem. Yeah. And that's really the way. It takes about an hour and a half in the morning because you know I don't do the uh, I don't do as rapidly as we did today because I have to I do slower because I have to take great care with the pronunciation and even then. It's not <laughs> oh no no no! There's no. I mean, Ramana Ashram, you know, they do it very fast, blazing fast. Yeah. Especially after the sixth Vanuvaka for Indra, you know, all the sixteen parts and all the twenty, they do very fast. The seventh and eighth and ninth. Oh my God! It's like an airplane <laughs> speed, you know. But when you spend your life from the time you're a little boy, then it makes sense. But I'm I'm. The words like honored or an insult, I'm so touched to be here and invited. And, you know, I have none of this at home. So you can imagine my... Yeah, and like, you know, Ramana said, you know, your surroundings are not there. They're all a part of it. And, and without that, and without that, I thought, none of this is. You can, you can attend every month. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Month. Every because yes, I listen to this same group, Midwest Chapter, every morning on YouTube. Is who I chant with. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm deeply appreciative, all of you. This is a. Thank you. We appreciate this. Overwhelming joy. Thank you for coming and sharing the experience. I'm sorry. Thanks for sharing the experience. Well, I wouldn't have if you. Had. You are Anishtan is an example for us. It's an inspiration for us. It's an inspiration. It's amazing. We have to follow this every morning, every evening. You have to do it. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. So, thank you all so much. God bless all of you. Even when he was working full time, he always got up at 3.30 in the morning, showered and did Sandhya on the night. Amen. Good all the place. Wow. He threw up his career. Wow. That but not as a ritual. Yeah. Because you know, the Sri Ishava Shupanishad, mm -hmm. the only Samhita for Shupanishad there is, it gives warnings about ritualistic <laughs> philosophy alone. And that's why Vikshatama went to the Kelai forest and humbled the Rishis with Mahmini. And then when they were humbled, then he taught them. And Muraminar wrote seven shlokas. He came to Ram and said, if you know, you know. And he said, I can't finish the instruction that Shiva gave to the Rishis and their wives. And Ramana wrote the Upadesa Sara. And I chanted every day in Sanskrit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, I was seeing Kanji Yes. We are seeing Mahapariva. We are seeing you. Oh, yes. That's a great message. And my Pariva. Yes. My Pariva. And I saw it with our Pariva. My Pariva. I still listen to Hare Dos Giri from the centenary celebrations. Intimate. 1992. My Pariva was there and the look on his face. Thank you so much. Thank you.